Earlier this week, President Uhuru Muge Kenyatta and his elder brother Raila Amolo Dinga held a meeting with the Senate leadership. But one man was missing from that meeting. The Deputy President William Samuel Ruto. Up to now, I've not understood why he was missing in action. But from the photos which were shared by status, I could read something. In that photo, the sitting arrangement, because you can always read messages from sitting arrangement, President Ruru Kenyatta was chairing the meeting. And to his right was Raila Amundodiga. And to his left was Wycliffe Ambetsa Oparanya, the chairman of the Council of Governors and also the Kakamega governor. Oparanya is the duty party leader of ODM party. Raila Dinga is the party leader of ODM party. So there was a message which was being sent out from that particular photo. But I've never understood up to now why the UD president, William Samuel Ruto, was missing in action. But one thing which you all know is that the UD president, William Samuel Ruto, of late has been laying an elaborate plan to scuttle any agenda of President Uhuru Munge Kenyatta. And that agenda includes even the agenda of the day during that particular meeting. And probably that's why the deputy president was actually missing from that meeting. And as part of this elaborate scheme, the duty president has actually gone further and recruited some of the former allies of Raila Amolo Dinga, including David Ndei, including Mudama. So today I want to give you the new schemes which the duty president has hatched as part of his strategy to scuttle any agenda the president is planning to achieve. But before we do that, if you are watching this video for the first time, I want you to take a second or two and click the subscribe button so that next time you produce a video like this, YouTube will automatically notify you. Now let us get to the main issue. It is now clear that President Ruki Nyata has an agenda for the country. And it is also very clear that the Riti president will not allow him to implement those agenda. Because politics will always remain politics. The moment President Ruki Nyata will achieve some of the agendas he's, in, he's planning, then that would be bad politics for the Riti president, William Samuel Ruto. And we all know that these guys are actually done. The president has gone his separate way. The DG president has also gone his separate way. But the question is, what are some of the schemes or the strategies which the DG president is now trying to implement? Let's begin with the, with the Building Bridges Agenda, BBI. The DG president has the option of either supporting the Building Bridges Initiative or opposing. And in my considered opinion, the best strategy for the duty president would be to oppose. But the duty president has given this agenda a totally different approach. For those who follow politics very closely, you all remember Makao Mutua at one time claiming that the duty president had approached him to be part of his team. He declined. David Ndi is now part of that team. And their strategy is very simple. Try to block the Building Bridges Initiative. And yesterday, David Ndi filed a petition. And in that petition, David Ndi wants to block the planned changes to the Constitution to expand the executive. President Uru Kenyatta wants an inclusive government because he believes that an inclusive government will make at least some tribes believe that they're part of the government. So David Ndi and his team, which includes the highly respected Cheroitich Say, there is James Ngonde and Wanjiko Gikonyo, have gone to court to block that. Then the other thing they want to do is they want the court to declare some chapters of our constitution to be unamendable so that those chapters cannot be amended in any way so that they remain eternity clauses. The main motive, politically speaking, for that move by David Ndi to go to court is to help the deputy president achieve 
two political objectives. The first objective is that the deputy president in his strategy wants a legal battle which is going to drag this process. Remember, the Building Bridges Initiative process has the timelines. So they intend to use the courts to drag the timelines so that later on someone can even, can even challenge the timelines. Remember already, the COVID has interfered with some of the timelines. So they still want to go for the legal battle so that they can extend and drag the process. So that's number one. Number two, which is basically the main fear of the duty president, is that what next should the Building Bridges Initiative process or referendum succeed? If the, ref if the referendum is going to succeed, it means the duty president is going to be defeated. Any defeat for the duty president at that particular time would be very bad for him politically speaking. So the best thing for him is for his team to stop that defeat. Because a defeat would mean one thing, that the Building Bridges Initiative team are going to gain the momentum. While those who are supporting the duty president are going to lose the momentum. He doesn't want to do that. So the first strategy is on the Building Bridges agenda. And on that is using David Indy and the civil society. Remember, in one of my videos on this platform, I once opined that the duty president is going to bank on the civil society to achieve some of his political objectives. So that's number one. Now, the second agenda of the president, which these guys are scuttling, is the Nairobi transformational agenda. The president, in his own wisdom, decided to take over certain functions of the county government of Nairobi. Because Mike Songo was facing a lot of challenges. So Songo handed over several functions of the county assembly of Nairobi to the national government. And Uru Kenyatta then went further and appointed and created the Nairobi Metropolitan Services and appointed Major Mohamed Badi as the Director General. Alice Wahome, who is a member of parliament from Kandara constituency, who has nothing to do with Nairobi, has gone to court. She has gone to court to challenge a move by the president. For those who have been following politics, the president recently authed Major Badi so that he can be allowed to attend cabinet meetings. So Alice Wahome has gone to court to challenge the move to make this guy a cabinet secretary. And of course, we all know that Badi has not been made a cabinet secretary. He will only be allowed to sit there. But there's a challenge. This is a major, which means he's a, uh, he's a military guy. He's not a civilian. He cannot sit in the cabinet. So Alice Wahome is going to challenge that. So let us wait and see how that's going to unfold. But that's one area and one strategy they're using to scuttle the president's agenda. Number three is the unity agenda for the president. When President Uru Kenyatta and Relu Dinga had the handshake, one of the main reasons they gave was for the country to remain united. The duty president has refused up to now to embrace that handshake. So which means today Kenyans are asking if the handshake was supposed to unite the country, why is the other part being left out? And then now comes Oscar Sudi. Oscar Sudi. What was the objective of Oscar Sudi's utterances? And Joanna Geno. I did a comprehensive video on that. But in short, what Oscar Sudi wanted to achieve, and which they are already achieving, is that these guys initiated the talk about dynasties. They initiated the talk about some mother being more important than the rest. So basically, they are creating a class, a class war between the rich and the poor, or what they can call the hustlers and the dynasties. So once Oscar Sudi made those utterances, the duty president then went to, to Kajiado and spoke passionately about the hustlers. They started wearing Zile Kofiazao, the hustlers. So in short, Oscar Sudi was meant, Oscar Sudi's statements were meant to cause disunity between the two communities which came together in 20 
seven, I mean, which came together in 2013. So Oscar Sudi is also helping them achieve that objective. And number four is the early campaigns. The president wanted his legacy. So he told everybody, suspend campaigns. His deputy would have been the first one to embrace that advice because the president had actually promised to support him. Up to now, the duty president is still engaging himself in early campaigns. In fact, today he has escalated it further. I have a friend, two friends, one from, uh, from uh, Tanzania called Hillary, another one from uh, Uganda. They've actually been asking me to do videos about Uganda and uh, about Uganda and uh, Tanzania. So these guys were asking me why it's appearing as if Kenya is going to go for an election. The guy from Uganda was telling me that for them, they have a general election. But the heat in Kenya, or the politics, te political temperature in Kenya, is way higher than the ones they are witnessing back in their country. So the president, so the duty president has actually refused to heed to the advice to stop early campaigns. He's actually escalated, escalating those campaigns to higher temperatures today. So by doing that, he's actually scuttling the president's agenda. And lastly, is what's happening at the Senate. And that's probably why the president did not invite his deputy, or even if he was invited, he refused to attend. That meeting was supposed to come with a solution to the stalemate at the Senate. Today, all counties announced that they were going to down their tools. But the president wanted a solution. The duty president did not attend. And I, I learned that during that meeting, two senators, Fatuma Dulo, who was one of the Team Kenya, and the Taita Tavita senator, who was also one of the Team Kenya guys, were invited to attend that meeting. And they attended. But one man, Mutula Kilozo Jr., was also invited to attend the meeting at State House. And he refused. So those two individuals were actually enough to tilt the vote in favor of the president. But when that news about this meeting came up, for those who were keenly following the politics, the Tangatanga guys started putting pressure on two individuals. The Nandi senator, Gerard Gay, and Susan Kiheka, to change their mind because they are actually supporting. So they started putting pressure on them now to jump so that the stalemate was going to continue. So the duty president is actually ripping a lot of politics from the current stalemate. So those are how the duty president is actually managing to scuttle, to scuttle all the agendas of the president. And you are in politics. And that's how politics is supposed to be played. Anything which favors Uhuru today, anything which will make Uhuru Kenyatta achieve his legacy, would be a plus for President Uhuru Kenyatta and for Raila Moludinga. Any bad thing is not blamed on Uhuru and Raila Moludinga. In fact, yesterday I saw a member of parliament, Silvanus Osoro, asking someone in a comment, Kwanini sasa Madina Stiswa Meshindwa ku pass vote the Senate? Let us wait and see. But the duty president is playing smart politics thank you guys and if you're watching this video for the first time please just take a second or two click the subscribe button and again i want to continue thank you guys for your continued support we hit 80,000 subscribers yesterday which is a milestone for us and i actually celebrate it i actually celebrate the fact that we are now at 80,000. it's only possible because of the support you guys give the channel thank you guys so much and just continue sharing the videos it pays off just share the videos to the, your friends just continue dropping your comments creating inter interactions giving the video thumbs up just continue all doing for for me all those basic things the growth of the, this channel i actually attribute it to you guys thank you guys and please may you have a good day